Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester. Panhandle Outdoors, your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Winston Chester. Glad you're here this Tuesday morning. Got a great show lined up as always. But first, our weather brought to us by uh, Haney Technical Center. We have a situation over there. They have all kind of neat programs. So if you get a chance, remind check them out. Today's high is going to be all the way up to 64, but the low is going to be 37. So we've got a big, wide range of temperature. And I was thinking we need to enjoy this cold weather while we can. It won't be long before it's going to be starting heating up. So I, I, you know, I don't like really, really cold weather, but I love weather like this. It's just nice and cool and just, just refreshing. So I hope you have the same feelings about it. Water temperature is hanging around at 61 degrees. It's been real steady like we talked about yesterday. We'll take a look at our river readings. The Appalachian Coal of Blumstown, and we said it was going to shoot up, but boy, it's dropping out fast. It is reading right now uh, 8.1, but it actually, that's how, look at Saturday and Sunday, it was way up there, and it started dropping off yesterday, uh, yesterday real fast. But it's going to level off now the rest of this week, so it should be some good fishing reading. 8.1. We chalked a hatchet at Caraville, basically uh, did us, it's, it's talk about going up that fast. Both of them just shot up. And then uh, this one's not going to drop as fast as you chalked a hatchet one, but it's reading right now 9.5, and through the middle of the week now it's going to be a slow, steady drop. Okay? Now take a look at our tie chart brought to us by Kent Forest Lawn Funeral Home and Cemetery. Today's, today's the 27th on, on Tuesday right here. We're looking at a a low tide at 1.23 this morning and a high tide at 3.27. Uh, but it's going to be negated by a marine forecast. That, that's not much of a tidal flow right there. The marine forecast, they're calling today coming uh, out of the northwest by the middle of the day. It's going to be hitting about 17 miles an hour. So that's really strong. So, you know, if you're going out on a boat, you really don't need to get too far off. And again, uh, we talk about this all the time, about that north, northwest wind blowing a lot of shallow water, so if you're going to be up in the head of some of these bays, you need to be careful too and, and take your time. But don't get out don't get out in a small boat in this kind of wind. It's going to be pretty strong today. All right, we'll take our break and we'll be right back. All right, welcome back. As always, uh, not as always, but most of the time this section we have a few pictures to show you. And it's, it's fascinating again how these pictures just pour in. And uh, we set up now where we can just show a lot of fresh pictures and what happened over the weekend and also. Let's get started on the first one that was sent in. Actually, Ronnie Groom sent this to me from down at CNG because this is entered in a big buck contest. This is a this is a really nice buck right here. This is a coal brusher, and uh, this is from he's from Panama City, and he, that is a nice buck there, Cole. And I see that big old smile on the face, and that makes you happy. Uh, here's another buck. This is David Hawkins' buck. He got it up here, and. Uh, Sitting on tailgate, big buck right there. Here's another one, and this is not a Florida buck. This is a friend of ours, Bill Buchanan, lives here, but he, his lease is up there, Cuthbert, Georgia, and uh, they get some nice bucks up there, and I think that's wrap, wrapped up the Georgia hunting season too. Uh, check this out. How about this bobcat? This is this is uh, Scott uh, Scott Kelly's boy, Boone Kelly. Uh, got a bobcat, and you know the thing about these bobcats, they that's a good, cool picture there. They're really bad about, uh, you know, they uh, they get the egg, quail. They'll they'll get the quail. They'll get deer, and, and uh, Scott said they'll kill more than ten hunters in the woods. The bobcat will, so they took that one out. Doing some fishing here. It's, it's cold weather fishing in a kayak, but he's all wrapped up, and we talk about it all the time. That, you know, sheephead are around these bridge pilings. That's just, uh, you can count on that, and you just got to catch a tide right and, and catch them feeding in there, and you can catch them nice ones. This is uh, Brandon Barton on his kayak there. Good job, Brandon. All right, this is, this is not showing the game. This just shows a father and a son right here, and I just, this is classy. This is Jamie Schulte and his son Christian. I, I know, I know them, I know the grandparents and all, and and they hunt in Georgia, so this was the end of their season, and he just took a picture of another, he called it another memorable year in, uh, with his son in the woods. And I thought this is, this is classic uh, here in the Panhandle. So, uh, Y'all take these pictures of these kids because they grew up so fast, and when you go hunting and fishing with them, take those pictures. They're something to be treasured. And uh, Jamie, uh, Jamie got a nice buck. I think Christian did too this year up there in Georgia. So good picture there. I, I, I just really like that one. Okay. Young lady here, Kayla Kramer, Kayla, back when I was coaching track, Kayla ran track for me, but she ended up going to Bay High 
which is okay. She's a sweet girl, and uh, she I didn't realize she was a big outdoors when she is, but nice redhead, uh, pretty dog there, and a, a pretty girl. Good job, Taylor Kramer. And they're still, uh, on, on, on occasion now, you're going to catch these. If You, you just got to go out. You're not going to make a... Uh, you catch a bunch of them right now, but you can catch them. Nice flounder. This is a uh, Pete Turner right here. And about, let's see, one more. Uh, just a great, uh, just hit me. What, if you build a stairs, especially outdoor cabin or something, what a great storage solution this is, building these stairs. So outdoorsman, I just thought it was cool. I thought, I know some of y'all appreciate that kind of construction right there. And our last picture here, these young folks here on the, uh, wrapping up duck hunt. Clay Patrick up there in Bascom. Taylor, Reese, Bowden, Buck, Tyler, and Charlie on a nice duck hunt. Some nice wood ducks right there, up there in Bascom. That's good job. Good job there, young folks, right there. All right, that takes care of our, our pictures. Now, I did want to pass on news that I saw this last week. Actually, last Monday on Martin Luther King Day, uh, the fishermen down at Rodman Reservoir, it's not local, but it's, it's down in, in uh, out not too far from sort of central Florida, Rodman Reservoir. It caught a fisherman, and this is documented, caught a 14-pound, one-ounce bass. His name was Richard, Richard Whitmore from Ringo, Georgia, 27 years old. He and his buddy came down there fishing with a guide. They were fishing with a live shiner near that dam, and it was documented by the FWC. That's why it took a couple of days. 14 pounds, one ounce. So anytime a 14-pound bass is caught, that, that's just great news. He was, of course, caught, picture taken, documented, and, and released. So, a uh, 14 pound bass, that's sort of like a 12 point buck. They're, they're rare uh, in, in na nature. I know you get some big deer behind fence, but uh, a, a 12 point buck in, in, in uh, public land is almost unheard of now, as is a 14 pound bass. I just want to pass that on to you, okay? Let's take a quick break and we'll be right back. <laughs> Now, welcome back. Glad you're with us this morning. One thing, a lot of uh, deer are being taken this time of year, and I was thinking about, we are driving back from Alabama this past weekend, and I was, uh, talking, and we were talking about the deer carcasses, because we'd run by a processing plant in this little, in this little town in Hertzboro, Alabama, and they'd done over 1,300 deer. He expected to do about 1,500 deer this, this season, and of course, they hit it hard for four months. We were talking about the carcasses, and and, you know, as individuals, a lot of time, you just make sure that everybody disposes of the carcasses correctly uh, in the right place and in these creeks is not the right place and the ditch is not the right place and on people's public property uh, is, is, is wrong area. So make sure you do it in the right place and, uh, you know, nature will take care of itself disposing of it correctly, but don't, don't go dumping it somewhere. So uh, and we're, we're real good about that. Sometimes we, uh, the FWC catches some folks doing it other way. So I got that written down. So also a hunter safety class will be over in Gaston County on January 31st. That's just Saturday. And, you know, you take the internet class and then it's going to be from 8 o'clock to 3 o'clock in Midway. Uh, Midway is sort of halfway between not sort of, exactly between Quincy and Tallahassee, Midway. I remember growing up, I was always fascinated with these historical names uh, of, of the towns. And I always, I, so every town I ever went through, I tried to find out how, how they got a name. You know, like Chipley was a railroad guy, Weewaw Hitchcock, or any name. And, and I always thought well, names is fascinating. Jacksonville, named after Andrew Jackson. So I just, what, whatever town is it, especially here in the southeast, I know the origin of it. But I always thought, well, I, told, I remember talking to my dad about Midway. I said, that's just not a very cool name, Midway, halfway between something. So I said, this is sort of named after somebody. But anyway, I, I always have memories of, of Midway. And Midway's all over the country, y'all. All right, so uh, anyway, that's coming up. Also, we're going to get ready to set up our video. This video now was our hunting trip over, over Martin Luther King weekend. We were up there uh, in, outside of Elba, Alabama, and it was about six or eight miles to the east of us. Stayed at a very nice hunting lodge. It was one of these family trips. Went to Walter and Wendy and their kids, and it, just, it, it's a, it was a beautiful lodge. So you'll have some of the video now will be coming from the lodge itself where uh, there's some big, big uh, planted areas out there where the, and you can't hunt, of course, around the lodge, but you can get some great photography just from the uh, window there. So have some of that. And then uh, we'll have, we'll go by, we went to the cafe there local. And when I'm in on a trip or something, I love to go to these little local cafes. So if we hunt in the woods and all, in this local cafe, the ranch house right there in Elba. And it's a little small place, great food. Uh, it's fun talking to the people there and uh, talking to some hunters and all. But there were two waitresses that I talked to 
and both of them had gotten a deer over the weekend. I thought, well, that's cool. I tell you what, deer movement. If both waitresses at a restaurant get get a, a nice buck a weekend, so I little I just stopped there a spontaneous interview with them. So it's, this is a good video. I think you'll enjoy it. And we'll come back and get our fishing game forecast. So Jeff, let's go ahead and roll this. deer hunt in Elba. Listen, I didn't get one, but I, I'm at a ranch house cafe. I just had some of the best barbecue pork I ever had. And these two ladies here, they both got a big buck this weekend. Now, they're real busy now, but I'm going to ask them in a minute. I'm going to ask them in a minute to show us a picture. But uh, listen, if you ever come up here to Elba, at the ranch house cafe, I'll show you some of this. This is Savannah, and Savannah got a nice buck. Tell us real quick, see if you Savannah, check this out. Tell us about that real quick. How many shots? One shot. At what time do you get to the stand? Uh, 6.30. And what time do you shoot? 7. What With was it? 2.43. 2.23. 2.43. 2.43. Congratulations. Good Thank job. you. Now y'all get back to work. Who's got one? Oh, uh, this is Brittany. And Brittany, you got your, this is your first buck? Mm -hmm. Okay, so okay. tell us what happened with that one. That's how you got it. Uh, it's on our own land. It was like a six point, small six point. And I was out at, I got out there about three and I shot about five. One shot. Wow. And I was all this weekend. Y'all both mm -hmm. on this weekend. I was yeah. your best friend. Y'all best mm -hmm. friend. Well, uh, what kind of gun were you shooting? Uh, SKS, I think 270. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, listen, uh, that, that food was delicious. Oh, thank you. Uh, we'll, we'll have this on TV. <laughs> Yes, sir. Ah, that's his first buck. Look at there. So wow. <laughs> well, tell us about it. Okay. Dad, well, Dad, I knew something was up because I didn't. I didn't. I saw your daddy grinning. Because they even said, did they get anything? I said, no, they would have said something. <laughs> A little sneaky. Now well, tell us about it. Okay. Well, we um, walked in and we got uh, into both of the tripods. So we had like the field all the way around us. So, um, Dad, I was sleeping. So I, I had my poofy oversized clothes on and I was asleep. And Dad woke me up and said that two doe had just run across the field. So he thought a buck would be chasing behind them. So we waited for about how long? This is a pretty good one after that. We waited a long time and no buck came after them. So we were just sitting there and waiting. And I turned and I was just kind of looking all around me. And I saw a white tail flicker, so it looked pretty small. Oh, I so I, from here. I looked and I saw his body, and I was going up his body, and I said, "There's a deer." So I went up and I saw a rack, and I was like, "It's a buck." It's so a I started buck. shaking, but he looked really small from where I was. So. But he ain't. Right. Well, he was he was following the nose. 
He wasn't following a doe. He was on a completely different trail. That we were looking yeah, this way. Right. The doe came behind us, and then she actually actually got down. And I told her to go walk the trail to see if she scared those does, does out, or to see if she get a better place to shoot the buck if he came across. And so she came back and sat down, and then five minutes later, this deer came out on the other side. Oh, completely different trail. So she, so she was first. out of the. She was she out saw of the first and told me, "Dad, there's a deer." Put his head this way, Mason. Once you said, and, and then, so, then so I happened? realized. Then I realized it was a buck, so I was like, oh my goodness, Where were you when you buck. saw it, when you realized it was a buck? You... I was in the tripod. Okay, but were you sitting down? Yes. Okay, so then you so realized it was a buck. So what happened? And I had, and the gun was in the corner, leaned up against the rail. So Dad said, get your gun, get your gun ready. So I like picked it up and I started aiming, and he was walking across the field, and then he stopped, and then he kept walking, and then he like went like that for a little bit, so I thought that I made a noise or something, but I didn't. I don't know. So because then he got up and he started walking again. So dad, what you what call did you do? <laughs> yeah, he made that call and he stopped and he kind of looked towards our towards us. So I thought this is my only chance. So I was still like shaking and my heart was pounding like so bad. <laughs> you shoot him twice. So well, let her finish. Tell a story. <laughs> so let her finish story. So I right. shot him like right in the stomach. And I couldn't see through my viewfinder. The sun was shining so bright, I could not see anything I had. So I just had to just hope I had it. I tried to back it all the way out and get as much. Yeah, yeah. Because for me to get behind my camera, I had to get all the way over like that, and I still couldn't see it with the light. So the deer was stopped and looked at us, and he was like about to take another step. So I pulled the trigger, and he and I saw him kick. But I, I, but I thought he seemed like he was hitting a little back. Uh -huh. Yeah. So he kind of like ran and then he started slowing down and he stopped like in the, near the middle of the field because he was hurting. So dad pulled out, what was it? 270. 270. And he shot him and the deer was turned away from us. So dad shot him in the back. And um, so he took off running down in that <laughs> bottom and he went that all the awesome. way. He went through the woods and he, <laughs> went, he slid down the hill. And so um, dad was like, I think you hit him. So, a little bit later, like three minutes later, we were so excited. No, we waited about 20 minutes. We did? It was long. <laughs> I thought it was like three <laughs> minutes. <laughs> Can I just say something? Once I said, was it big? And you said at first, it looked small at first. That kind of gave me the clue. I was like, okay, she got one. <laughs> well, so then... Um, so uh, y'all, so, so you waited. I, I said, you waited. get down. I said, I'll stay in the stand. You go to the spot where we last saw him, so we'd be sure that we have him marked correctly for the trail. You look for blood. Right. So I was looking, and I was like, I don't see any blood. So, so she didn't see any blood. Then I came over there, and then we right. followed the trail that he was on, going down to the bottom, uh -huh. and went down that trail through the thick for a good 50 yards, and no blood. I was like, we didn't, we didn't hit the deer. Mm -hmm. we, but he saw both missed. Yeah. I thought we both missed this deer. I don't know how that's possible. And then. Uh, Got ducked through a little thing under the thick stuff, and there was two two bright red drops of blood. Well, well, before that, we heard a lot of crashing and everything, and I was on a different trail than Dad. We were like on two different trails, a little bit away, so I couldn't see Dad. So I thought he maybe like fell down the um, fell down the trail, <laughs> fell down the hill or something. Sure. <laughs> I thought it was me falling. Dad. <laughs> and he goes shh, and I was like yes, it's a deer. So. Um, I went on the trail and he found um, the blood. So we left to so get it we, we heard more crashing after that every time yeah. the blood. So I was like, hold on, he's still alive. We're getting out of here. As soon as I found the two drops of blood, I heard him. And we turned around and left. We went to Tanya's, got her something to eat, just to give that deer time and space uh -huh. so we wouldn't keep running. So then we came back, followed down the trail. And then as we got down into the big oak bottom, go ahead. <laughs> oh yeah, so we were going down and there was just this big pile of blood all over the leaves and there was like like it was tons of blood and all the leaves were padded down so he had like rolled and fell down that hill and there was tons of blood so I saw a little bit of white and we were still up the hill and I was like oh my gosh there he is and so I was like there's a deer there he is and dad goes it might just be a log so I got a little bit further and I saw more white and I was like no I think that's him and dad goes it might be a log Ashley then I saw the horns I was like no it's a bug it's a bug <laughs> and so we went down there and I counted and it was an eight point and through my scope he looked like a small six point mm -hmm. so I was like really excited <laughs> see it's a silhouette it's too dark I want to get down underneath you got your Go ahead. Good job. Thank you.
Welcome to the book club. <laughs> That's a sweet sister. Bunch of hunting girls. Yes. Mm -hmm. Love you. Love you. Steel pictures, you got her camera? Ah, right, welcome back. Hope you enjoyed that. That was Ashley's first buck, and it was just a great trip, uh, just a wonderful, just a great opportunity to get out in the woods with the kids and all. It was really enjoyable. Hope you have a chance to do some of that stuff with your family and your friends. Okay, let's take a look at our fishing game forecast for today, brought to us by Mark Cowart, Edgewater Beach Realtor. March number is 832-6000. Our time is 5.54 a.m. to 7.54, and then this afternoon, or late, right there at dark, will be 6.20 to 820, so that, that's two good times. I also want to mention the fishing seminar of Mark and his son Michael will be putting on one week from today, okay? It'll be February the 10th at Legendary Marine there in the Panama City Beach, and it will be at 530, but call call that number there on the screen and, and make a, let them know you're coming. And so they have room for everybody. They're gonna have some refreshments and give away some stuff and all, and uh, some samples and some, some good stuff there, okay? Now, we, I, I was reading up on something uh, recently. Now, t tomorrow now we're going to have Captain Ken Paramore coming in at FWC and some really good stuff he, he always brings, so I know we're looking forward to that. I was looking up uh, this past, uh, about two weeks ago, they had the, what they call a SHOT Expo, this shooting, hunting, and outdoor uh, trade show out in Las Vegas. And I've, I've heard of it before, but it's really neat. I, I've never been to it, but it's a really big, it's the fifth largest expo in all of Las Vegas, all the conventions and all they have, so you know how big it is. And they had a second biggest crowd they ever had, but they said that's a barometer of what's going to happen in this coming year. Uh, you know, a lot of the firearm industries out there and all. And what's fascinating is they cannot get over the, the growth of the women participants in, in this field. And it, it's not un it's not uh, news to me because I know uh, we talk about how ladies and all like to shoot and all, but I'm going to talk more in detail about it. They're saying over 25 percent of their business now well, with females and you know coming in and talking about firearms and and shooting and all, and it's just uh, they're just uh, uh, amazed with it. But you know if they've been watching our show or watching outdoor ed class, they would have seen this a long time ago. These girls like to do this stuff. All right, going to wrap it up. I uh, hope you enjoyed today's show. You make sure you do something good for your fellow man. You have a great day, and God bless. Thanks for joining us for Panhandle on Tours with Winston Chester. Panhandle on Tours features hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle on Tours.